bless your choir. You can take your seats. Give the Lord another mighty hand of praise. <laughs> praise God. Uh, you are most welcome for our Eureka Kingdom time. Our time for the word. The word Eureka simply means I've got the answer. We come to get the answer from the word of God, from his presence. Praise God. Let's look at wisdom for prosperity. Write it down. Wisdom for prosperity. Let me tell you, write these things down. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Everybody who has changed drastically and got what God asked for him or for her, they got changed in the mind. They received the word. They took it seriously. They took it seriously. They recited it. They spoke it. They thought about it. That is, that is how healing comes. That's how miracles happen. That is it. None among you here is poor. That is the truth. As long as you are born again, but begin to prosper. Allow God to prosper you. Allow God to prosper you. Prosper in your soul. Prosper in your soul. Then you will prosper in the body. Prosper in your soul. You are, you are not, let me tell you. In the kingdom, you have entered. Jesus is the door into the kingdom. You have entered the kingdom of God. You are not going to use the world's lifestyle to fulfill the kingdom's vision. Because God has a vision for you. God has what? A vision for you. You have to live a kingdom lifestyle to fulfill the kingdom vision. The choir was singing here. Blessings, honor, glory, and power. Look at what belongs to you. Look at it. Revelation 5, verse number 12. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory. Just look at that. Wisdom, strength, and honor, and glory, and praise. The lamb. Who is that lamb? Where is Jesus now as far as you are concerned? In you. In you. Let me tell you, in you. So in you right now, there's power. In you, there's wealth. In you there's wisdom. Amen. In you there's strength. Amen. In you there's honor. Amen. In you there's glory. Amen. In you there's praise. Amen. It is when you receive that truth in your mind. Which is inside your soul. Your life begins to change. Because now you will begin to, to, to realize it. It will begin to manifest. The Bible says that the devil leads the entire world what? I want to hear. That the devil leads the entire world what? Astray. Astray. So, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. Is full of deception. So he works by deceiving people. He hinders even people who believe in God not to receive fully what belongs to them. He just plays, that, that is a trick he plays. He causes you not to receive. So let me tell you, it's about your mind. It's about your mind. It's about, some people say, those are for rich people. Then where are you? You condemn yourself in poverty? 
you condemn yourself in poverty? Praise God. Ah, that shop is for rich people. Oh, that place is for rich people. Me, I'm not going there. And we are born again. How do you make such a statement? Oh, that saloon is for rich people. For rich people. Now, what? what? Why don't you just keep quiet? And the devil is listening. You need to know that the spirit world is very real. Much more, because everything in the physical is controlled from the spirit world. The universe was birthed from God with spirit. Praise God. Everybody has some knowledge. Big, much, or little. But I want to tell you, whatever knowledge you have, if you apply it well, when you have wisdom, that knowledge will benefit you. Praise God. You can accumulate volumes of knowledge and you don't prosper in your soul and you fail to apply it. If you don't put it in your mind and apply it, it won't benefit you. It won't. So wisdom is application of knowledge to your profit. You see? Wisdom for prosperity. Prosperity is abundance, wealth, doing well. That's what prosperity is all about. God has called you to do well. He has called you to do well. He has not called you to suffer. You have to be committed to certain truths. When Jesus says in John chapter, uh, John chapter 9 up to 10, he says I'm the gate, then 10. John chapter 10 verse number 10. The thief comes but to steal, kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Ab do you believe that? That means there's nothing that you do according to God's will that will destroy you. No. That will rob. God can never rob you. God can never steal from you. When you are committed to that truth, there's nothing that you do that God says that will bring you problems. No. Instead, it gives you abundance. Praise God. So before you listen to anything that the world says, be very careful of who you are. Be very careful. Because you don't waste time, don't waste your life. Because you have work to do. You have work to do for God. You have things to do for others. You have a mission here in this life. You have a beginning from yourself, your family, the people around you. The community, the church, the community, the nation and the world. Praise God. Amen. Now let's look at Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt do according. I mean, for, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Now look at this. Look at this. Because we are looking at wisdom for wealth. For prosperity. Wisdom for prosperity. Prosperity is doing well. Prosperity is having abundance. Affluence. Mm -hmm. That's what prosperity is. Mm -hmm. And prosperity covers three areas. Beloved Apostle John has spoken to us about. Covers the physical area. In fact, it starts from the soul. The spirit. And then the physical. It covers three areas. It covers your soul. It covers your spirit. It covers the physical. Prosperity of the physical, the world 
For the world, they look at the physical only. The gold, the silver, the power. The power, the favors. That is it. That's what they look at. But for us, as God's children, our people who are spiritual, we look at the spiritual. When you are born again, you are prosperous. You, you have begun to prosper in your spirit. You can never prosper spiritually unless you are born again. But that's not enough. You have to prosper also in your soul. That is in your mind. In your will and in your emotion. You must prosper there. Then you, then you are able to prosper in the body. And physically. You can never prosper beyond your soul. No. When your soul is impoverished, <laughs> your physical life will also remain poor. Praise God. knowledge in the world if you know all the thing if you know all and then you have the the, the 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 physical wealth you can put them together and you get what you want you get the power you want you make a headway but we have seen that it has misled many and money and knowledge does not give you all the answer you need in life no you need the spiritual angle. You need God himself. Praise God. Now, look at this same passage. Let's look at it in God's word translation. Never stop reciting these teachings. You must think about them night and day. So that you will faithfully do everything written in them. Only then will you prosper and succeed. You just look at that. Look at that. Never stop reciting this teaching. That's why in KJV he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law, the word of God is the law. The word of God are principles. The word of God is wisdom that comes from him. Wisdom that brings about prosperity. Wisdom that causes us to prosper. The, the prosperity is a function of wisdom. The person of Jesus Christ makes you have eternal life. But for you to do well on earth here, you need wisdom. You need wisdom. Hmm? You need his principles taught in his word. You need his word. It will make you flourish here. Praise God. Hmm? Don't stop. Eh? Never stop reciting this teaching. But this is a very powerful thing. Let's think about this. Never stop reciting it. Meaning, keep speaking it aloud. Keep speaking it aloud. Don't read the word of God like a newspaper. Keep speaking it aloud. Keep repeating it. Now, look, that you must think. It's using the word must. You must think about them night and day. Night and day. Think about them night and day. Now, just let's look at, at Matthew, for example. Chapter number 8, verse number 17. The last part, part B. When you look at it, I like it in Good News Bible. It is simple. It is simple that way. It is simple that way. He did this to make come true what prophet Isaiah had said. Now, go, go to verse 16. When evening came, people brought to Jesus many who had demons in them. Jesus drove out the evil spirit with a word and healed all who were sick. Now, let's first look at that. He drove out the evil spirits with a word. With a word. He drove out the evil spirit with what? A word. He drove out evil spirit with a word. Now that Jesus is inside you and you have his word. He drove out evil spirit with a word. And remember Jesus himself said, in my name you will cast them out. In my name. Now you have a word. And that word is? 
Yes, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. In the name of Je Jesus, drove them out with a word. Je devil, Jesus drove you out with a word. Devil, Jesus drove you out with the word. You spirit from my village, Jesus you drove them out. At that time when he was walking the earth, he drove them out with a word. And now, every spirit coming from my village to disturb me, you have no power over me. I drive you out with the word. And that word is the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every demon from my village, go. Every demon from my village, go. In the name of Jesus, no sickness that you have put in my body can stay. Take it away and go. You know, you know, you need to keep looking at it. Just read, you don't read the whole page, just that two verses. Read two verses even for one week and see whether your, your life will remain the same. Amen. Your life won't remain the same. <laughs> I'm telling you. Edina, try it for one week. The devil will not appear again. <laughs> With the word. And heal all who are sick. And heal where? All who are sick. I have Jesus in me. Then he heal, he heal all who are sick. He heal all who are sick. Now let's go to verse 17. He did this. Why he healed? Because Isaiah spoke about it. He did this to make come true what prophet Isaiah had said 300 years before. He himself took our sickness. He himself took our sickness and carried away our diseases. Now you see other translations say infirmities. Pressure, blood pressure, uh, uh, diabetes. Uh, this other funny, funny sickness that there is no jam causing it but you, it makes you sick. They are called infirmities. They are called sicknesses. Praise God. Amen. And they can be passed from one generation to another. They can be passed, inherited. Those are infirmities. Sometimes you have no jam you can point to. That is the one causing this. But your body is paining all the time. Praise God. Yeah? Yeah. He took, he, he himself took our sickness. That was when on the cross upon his body. He took, that's why we share the Holy Communion. That's why we share the Holy Communion. He himself took our sicknesses. He himself took my sicknesses. Say, he himself took my sickness. He himself took my Say it together. He himself took my sicknesses. The Bible says, now, the Bible says, he healed all of them then. He healed all who were sick. He healed all who were sick. But while he was on the cross, he took up my sicknesses. 2,000 years ago, while he was on the cross, he took up my sicknesses and carried away my diseases. And carried away my diseases. And carried away my diseases. Back at, what are you doing in me? My body cannot accept you. Back ache, you are not accepted in this body. He carried away my diseases and he took upon his own body my sicknesses. Tumor, what are you doing in my body? Cancer, what are you doing? I, I don't accept you in this body. I don't accept you because Christ took upon his own body my sicknesses and carried away my diseases. He carried away my what are you doing here? Devil, take away what belongs to you. Take away. You know, you keep reciting that. If you can do it even for one week, for two weeks, do it. And see whether that pain will be there. It won't be there. Because that one will prosper your mind. And change your will to receive, to accept. Praise God. Because the word of God is the will of God. Once your will submit under the word, the will of God, things begin to happen. Things be, the miracles begin to happen. That's why apostle, you see, this same scripture, which are Joshua 1.8, is the same that Paul wrote in uh, Romans 12.2. Uh, he said, don't copy the customs of this world, but let God change you. As that translation said, let him transform you. 
change your form. The word transform means a change of form. Change your form by changing the way you think. You just look at that. By changing the way you think. Your life can be changed, brother, completely. The kind of food you eat can change. Not junk food. Good food. Can, can <laughs> because you have to be responsible. <laughs> God is not going to be responsible for you. <laughs> Some preacher was crying. I said, God, I'm dying. That the, the power of your health is in your mouth, is in your hand. <laughs> Told him, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. Unless you, you discipline your, your eating, <laughs> your, the way you eat, unless you discipline yourself in eating. That's why you are given the spirit of God to give you self-control. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit gives us self-control. <laughs> because everything that is not controlled becomes a problem. Praise God. Amen. You see, so, so church, when you look at that, when you look at that, you know, take us back to, 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 to our, the, the, our, our scripture of the, of the disease yeah. He carried away our sicknesses. Eh? One time I was praying like that. And actually, some pain in my body disappeared. Disappeared. I said, but this pain, what are you doing in me? He carried away my diseases. He took my sicknesses upon himself. And carried away my diseases. What are you doing here? This body does not accept the pain. This body does not accept it. Oh, my body is being renewed. My body is being renewed. My back doesn't accept this pain Amen. because he carried my sicknesses on his body on the cross. Hmm? And he carried away my diseases. He took away, why are you trying to put this? No, disease is not allowed in this body. You speak like that. You speak like that. And you see results. I want to guarantee you will really see results. That is wisdom for prosperity. It will cause you to prosper in wealth. You see, let me tell you. Fasting cannot drive away poverty. It can't. Poverty needs revelation of the word of God. Needs what? Need revelation of the word. Once you realize what God has for you and you believe it, the way you look at the world will change. Have you seen how easy it is for some people to make money and how difficult it is for some people to make money in the same place? It is about the way they are looking at things. That's why we have to be very careful about what we allow to dominate our mind. There's an English proverb that says that you cannot stop a bird from flying over your head. But at least you can stop the bird from coming and making a nest on your head. Hmm? Bringing grass and, stick and twigs and making a nest on your head, you can, ref you can stop that. So, you cannot stop thoughts, wrong thoughts from coming into your heart. But you can refuse them from staying. And you take the right one. The one of God. The one of God. Because that is what will change you. That is what will give you wealth. Because this is what God told Joshua. It was a critical moment in the history of the people of Israel. And you find that if you're a covenant child of God, if you're a covenant child of God, like our brother there, you need to meditate now on that word. You need to tell your body, you need to tell the devil that he took away my infirmities. That is infirmity. Paralysis is infirmity. He took away my infirmities. Carried away my diseases. This paralysis is not accepted here. My body is not accepting the paralysis. I'm receiving strength. 
I'm receiving healing. I'm receiving power. I'm going to walk. I'm going to work. Everything is going to be okay. Right now, something is happening in my body. In the name of Jesus. You cannot be doing that for one week, two weeks, three weeks, and you remain seated in that chair. No. Brother, you are coming out of that chair. Amen. Never stop reciting these teachings. It is the word of God. It's not hide the word. People, why it doesn't happen in the lives of people, they handle it casually. They handle it religiously. No. Stop handling it religiously. You see now, these fellows here, imagine you are better than them. Because the children of Israel, they were servants of God. They were what? Servants of God. Do you know who you, who you are? You are sons. You are sons. You are sons. That's why they, they say in Hebrews, the new covenant has better promises. Yeah, has better promises. It's superior to the old covenant. On that account. Praise God. Because in this covenant, the new covenant, God himself comes and lives inside you. Amen. That man is a very weak one. Amen. You must think about, never stop reciting. You just look at the Jews. Do you know that the traditional Jews, they do a lot of recitation. And that's what the Arab copied from them. Because also they came from Ismail. The sons of Abraham. The twelve princes. They recite. They keep, oh, 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 oh. They keep talking. They keep talking, reciting scripture. And, and that's what the Muslims have copied. They recite the Quran. They recite it. Imagine. Even uh, witches. Hmm? They keep reciting and muttering, reciting. In our uh, 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 village, when I was a small bo boy, you, you pass by uh, some the old uh, old person's house. You find them talking, talking, talking. But some of them, the bad ones, are cursing people before the day breaks. So that now they spoil your day. That's why it is very important for you to get up and you pray. And that's why a lot of bad dream comes around morning hours. <laughs> Put your, now you have phones, put a worship music there low, which cannot stop you from sleeping. But will make it very hard for the demons to be free around you. After you have prayed, you put that worship music there. And you will find that the occasion of bad dreams are not there. <laughs> or they are too minimal. They are reduced. <laughs> they fail to, 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 to program for you. Eh? 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 That's what they do. But once we're Christian, you wake up, you cancel every wrong program aside against you. In fact, sometimes you don't even need to, to cancel it. You just immerse yourself in some of the truths. Just immerse yourself in some of the truth. That's why you see some people don't even cast out demons. They just saturate themselves with the word that demons leave them alone. This one is dangerous. May you become dangerous to the demon. <laughs> because let me tell you, when you keep going, that you are fasting, they, they give you big books and you write all the names of the demons, that you will get tired because you will never finish them. The shortest cut is to know the power you have in the word. That will scare away demons from you. Because for him to come and torment you, he must first lie to you. When you accept the lies, then he comes and blocks your miracle. Blocks your miracle. You must think about them day and night. Instead of meditating about how big your problem is, how big your debt is, how big your sickness is. Look at what Jesus said about your healing. Look at what he says about your prosperity. Look at Deuteronomy 8, verse number 18. Look at Deuteronomy 8, if it is lack of money. Look at it. 
Look at it. Because you are supposed to think about it day and night. The promises of God. Let me tell you. The covenant is a powerful thing. The covenant. The covenant is a powerful thing. A covenant is a pack. It's a pack. Praise God. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power. For it is he that giveth thee power. To get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. Which he swear unto thy fathers. As it is this day. Just look at that. Look at that. Put it back. Put it back. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which is swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. The wealth is in the covenant. The wealth is in the covenant. You know when you sign a job contract is a covenant. They say on your retirement, this is what will be your benefit. So you don't struggle and say, oh, you don't worry now. Do you worry about the benefit? You don't. You know that is a part, it is in the in the contract. A covenant is a contract with God. So you know that poverty is not your portion. My God shall give me the power to get wealth. Amen. So you reject poverty. You reject poverty. And for you to make those things come, it's by doing. It is by doing. Never stop reciting this teaching. You must think about them night and day so that you will faithfully do faithfully do everything written in them many people in the church are expert in listening only they don't do it they're expert in listening you don't see results if you only listen you don't see results i've been encouraging Concy. i said Concy. Doesn't matter what your background is. If you'll obey God, you will live a righteous life. Because seek first the kingdom. Hmm? The kingdom is rule, is government, hmm? is desires, is heart. And live righteously. That is what righteous. Because some people like quoting that squeeze and they stop us that. They don't break it. They don't know what is inside. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all will be added. All the money will come. All the money. But do you understand what righteousness means? You live rightly. Live right. Tithe. Help the poor. Give. Obey the word. Love. Don't hate people. Obey. Obey the word. Then go after his heart. Then the wealth will come. Praise God. Amen. That is it. Right here, silly. Live right. Seek the kingdom and live right. Live right. Live right. Right, live right, live right. I'm telling you, and that's what we are told here. Do everything written in them, only then will you prosper and succeed. Only then will you prosper and succeed. Only then will you prosper and succeed. Only then will you prosper. And succeed. Only then will you prosper and succeed. You know, success accomplishing. Success has to do with accomplishing your goal. Then you will accomplish 
your goal, goal number one, goal number two, goal number three, depending on how many goals you have, hmm? you'll accomplish them. You'll accomplish them. And that's why I want to encourage you, like church service like this, don't take it lightly. Come, take the word. When you stay away, in fact, when visitors come and find you about to come to church, don't stay back. You say, join us. Let's go to church. Bring them to church. Because you will never solve. Some of them come because they have a problem for you to solve. You will never solve all their problems. But when you make them meet God, God will solve their problem. Amen. That is it. <laughs> Carry them to church. It is good we are starting home sales. It is good we are starting home sales. In fact, with us, with the, the, the 12 of us, we are going to start on Thursday. Prepare. Praise God. <laughs> With the 12 pastors. Then the 12 pastors will also make you also <laughs> the, 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 a group like that will continue. Praise God. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. <laughs> now lift up your hands and thank God for his word. Thank you. Thank God and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace. Grant me grace to take your word seriously. Grant me grace. We thank you, Master. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are gracious. Father, let your mighty hand rest upon us as a church. Rest upon every person who is here. Rest upon those who are watching online. Bless them. Bless them. Let them take your word seriously. We give you glory and we give you honor. Let there be a manifestation of your word in their lives. We thank you. We bless your name, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. I want to challenge those who are watching online, give you this opportunity to give your life to Jesus if you have not done so. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you can have that relationship now. You can, you can make it. You can enter a relationship with Jesus. You can do that by following this simple prayer of commitment after me. Follow this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive my sins. I repent of my sins. Right now, I invite you Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching church near you where you can go and fellowship in order to grow spiritually. If you live in the city of Kampala, you can get in touch with us through our contact. You are most welcome to worship with us on, uh, during our Sunday services. And I want to assure you that your life won't remain the same. If you have made this commitment, reach us through our contact. We shall send you material that can help you grow as a believer. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. We are going to give our offerings. Seeds are special offerings that you give God for a certain harvest you need. A seed as a name. You don't just say, ah, this is my seed. No, this is my seed for a job. This is my seed for this interview, to, for passing. This is my seed for marriage. This is my seed for ABCD. That's the harvest you want. You name the harvest you need. Then a sacrifice is a special offering for warfare. You see that your dreams are upside down. Your things are upside down. You see that there's an invisible hand fighting you. Put a sacrifice. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything. Had a sacrifice. It's another weapon for warfare. Psalms 20, verse number 1 to 4. May God remember you on the day of trouble and send you help from his house, from his altar. And remember all your sacrifices and your offerings and then give you what you desire. That is how it works. Praise God. So, we are going to give different categories. Let's pray. Father, bless your people as they give. Let your word come true in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.